who has lived in Tornado Alley and fire zones and you name it. He says it's really not realistic to tell people not to live in these areas. So, Michael, I would raise with you what Jay did, have them pay more for the privilege. What do you think? Well, Neil, first of all, people already do that. If you live in one of these high-risk areas, you're already paying a higher insurance premium for living in that area. But the, the idea that somehow the government, or I, I guess it would have to be the government, tell you where you can live and not live just eviscerates the concept of private property. And I don't think we want to go that far. But, what, but, but think about think it, though, about Michael, if the flip side is that as the government, i.e. us, the taxpayers, mm -hmm. we have to shell out right. dough, for these uh, people who have to either rebuild or change or modernize, what's wrong with that? Well, we already pay taxes for fire departments and police departments and flood mitigation. We already do that. So what's the difference between the risk of a fire in a forest area versus the risk of a fire in a tract subdivision where if one house catches fire, you may have the entire subdivision catch fire? Hmm. Those embedded costs for a fire department already exist. But I'm always fascinated with this idea that somehow people should live where there's no risk. Let's just think about this. Floods, hurricanes, hurricanes, floods, tornado alley, forest fires, dust, droughts. There's no place that we can live, Neil, in the United States of America where Mother Nature, and for that matter, our urban way of living, doesn't create some kind of risk. So, yes, you and I need to figure out a way individually to mitigate our risk. But I'm always worried about these concepts that says, look, people have to pay higher taxes for something they're already paying for. No, no, I, I see your point, it. Michael. But, now, now, of course, you went through Katrina and that nightmare. And I, and I always think that if you build the same type of homes in the same type of dangerous areas, now I know it's something where there are a lot of tornadoes. I mean, almost nothing is tornado resistant and all of that. Uh, but we try to make them at least stronger. We try to make them at least better able to buffet whatever disaster comes its yeah. way. Now, there's, yes. in the face of 70 mile an hour Santa Ana winds, I don't know if anything works. But don't you think that's a strategy that if you are going to live in these areas, build better for them? Absolutely. And we saw that in Florida. In 2004, one of the things the Florida legislature did was they increased the stringency of building codes for people that were going to live in, in Hurricane Alley. And we saw the actual effects of those where one school that was not retrofitted or rebuilt properly right, right. was torn up. Another one looked really good. So there are things that you can do that you can create incentives for. Insurance companies can require this. Building codes can require this. But I'm just always worried about the, the generally broad idea that somehow living in these areas, somehow we've got to now say either you can't do that or if you do that, we mandate four or five or six things. Let's instead let the silent and kind of quiet hand of the marketplace take care of it. Insurance rates, property taxes, all of those things will fix this stuff if we just right. recognize that. Not bad advice. Michael Brown, always a pleasure. Thank you.